everyone. In this video, I wanted to look at um, sort of options you have for determining the level of correlation uh, for a set, a data set. So this is following up from uh, the video about creating a scatter plot and finding the correlation coefficient. So for this set of data, I have already um, found the correlation coefficient, which is right here. This is the R value. Um, for this particular example, this R value is extremely close to one. So it's kind of obvious that there is significant correlation here. And we can see in the graph that this data does fall very closely along the line. Um, but it's not always so obvious whether the correlation we're seeing is significant or not, especially when you have larger data sets. So there's two different ways you can determine whether the correlation um, indicated by the correlation coefficient R uh, is significant or not. One way is to use the critical values for the correlation coefficient. So this is coming from table A6 in our textbook. Um, and the table is organized based on the sample size. So in this case, I have, um, looks like seven uh, pairs of scores. So each of these pairs counts as one person or one uh, element of the sample. So I'd be looking in the n equals seven row here. And then depending upon the significance level we want to use, uh, we can have an alpha value of 0.05 um, or 0.01 for the table. In most cases, you're going to be using the 0.05 um, unless the problem says otherwise. So I would take this 0.754 as my um, uh, critical value. And so that 0.754, what that means is you can sort of imagine drawing a number line where we've got a perfect correlation at one or negative one, um, and then at zero, that would be no correlation whatsoever. And so what this uh, critical value is, so 0.754, and then you'd also have a negative critical value of negative 0.754, um, basically is telling me that any anywhere um, between the 0.754 and one, or between negative one and negative 0.754, so sort of in the more extreme ends towards one and negative one, um, on that side of the critical value, this is where we do have correlation um, in either of these cases. So that could be positive or negative correlation. And then in the middle, um, sort of closer to zero or on the zero side of these critical values, this would be not correlated or at least not significantly correlated. So in this case, uh, the critical value that we've got here um, is 0.975, so that's like right about there. That is definitely in the correlated range. If we had come up with an R value of say 0.7, that's still fairly high, but not high enough to show significant correlation. So the critical values, um, this is just giving us that sort of magic number here. Ooh, I've never used this pen before. <laughs> the magic number here um, where higher than that or closer towards one, that is significant correlation and closer towards zero is not significant. The alternative way to do this is to do an actual hypothesis test. So we've already looked at hypothesis testing um, and the hypothesis testing template has a tab on it called correlation. So you'll see this is the correlation tab here. Um, the null and not alternative hypotheses are always the same um, for determining whether something has correlation or not, unless you were trying to look specifically at um, only positive or only negative correlation, which we, we're usually not in, or we're not in our class. Um, and so this little template here, I need to put in the correlation coefficient, so I could copy that from this previous um, calculation and I'm going to paste it as a value rather than a um, formula since I don't have the data included in this spreadsheet. Um, n was 7, that was the number of data points we have, and I can put in the significance level which in this case we were using 0 0.05. So the p-value that I'm seeing from this is extremely small, it's definitely smaller than the 0 0.05 significance level um, so since this p-value 
is less than alpha. Oh, what fancy pen. Um, this means that there is significant correlation. So that, that would just be the hypothesis test version of determining that.